I, I can't let you wear that bow tie and have that microphone like that and not have you do a strike three call. Like just, just, just pretend. Dude, I, I can't do this. I don't commit to this. You yeah, need a raspy sure. like New York voice. Yeah, three. <laughs> that was wonderful. That was oh, more yeah. emotion than, than Rosie's ever given in a radio broadcast. I know. Uh, I really wish there. you'd try harder. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to another Waiting for Next Year video. Today I have Mike Hadry on the other side of the interwebs. Uh, he's looking very dapper in his bow tie and he's looking very old timey with that microphone. I feel like he's going to call a baseball game. I feel like I feel like we came here to talk baseball and you're just going to do play-by-play, -play, Mike. Yeah, I'm, I'm here to be Red Barber or maybe Ronald Reagan, uh, one of the two, but hopefully <laughs> Red Barber. <laughs> <laughs> either way, let's we'll just go with it either way. I uh, wanted to specifically talk, you've spent some time uh, in the organization checking out some of the guys in the minor leagues. Uh, this week it seems like a lot of prospect lists have been released and uh, Indians top prospect Mejia has been on top five, top ten on most of those lists. Um, you've spent some time with him, you've spent some time with people in the organization, so I uh, wanted first for you to tell us what your impression of him has been and also what you're hearing from the organization. The most impressive thing is, and this is such a take because I talk about Jose Ramirez all the time, but there are a few people who you see with a level of contact skills where they handle any pitch in the strike zone. And Mejia from the right-hand side, I've seen him take pitches in and pull them. I've seen him take a pitch up outside over the strike zone, hit it the other way. Watching him at the plate is phenomenal. And his bat is big league ready right now. And, and I've in conversations with people around Akron, around the organization. I think the Indians believe that too. The real rub exists with him defensively and his ability to communicate. You know, he's worked really hard, but his English uh, is still at the developmental stage. Doing interviews down in Akron, it's often a uh, commonplace to work through Omir Santos, who's a former catcher and now bench coach, to interview Mejia. The English skills just aren't there yet. But the other big, there are two other big pieces. His, his game calling isn't there. Uh, they're working on his game calling, sequencing pitches, developing, seeing hitters for the second and third time in the Eastern League, figuring out ways to game plan around them. The final piece is just the receiving part. He's super athletic, um, but at times he can be sort of lazy, uh, blocking balls in the dirt and, and, and cleaning up his framing, which ultimately I think is easier for him to polish when he's working alongside people like Roberto Perez and Jan Gomes, but uh, that's another conversation. So I think the organization is inordinately high on him, and, and this is a guy who a couple of years ago was uh, getting in spats with coaches and, and really struggling to, to accommodate himself to living in the U.S. and uh, playing what are the draining seasons for an 18, 19, and 20-year-old. So uh, you spent some time you know, with the minor league clubs, is there anybody else that's caught your eye? Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly in Akron, and Eric Haas fascinates me. Uh, Haas is a, another catcher like Mejia, and talking to their manager, Mark Budzinski, he's having a really hard time trying to find at-bats for both of these guys to develop offensively because uh, both of them are so good. They both have plus arms behind the plate. Maybe Mejia's is a little better, but Haas has really bought into this fly ball revolution. He's hit... 17 home runs in what is a pitcher's park in a first half of roughly 55 games, which is absolutely insane. Um, and he's someone who's upped his fly ball rate by 15%. He's worked on slotting, uh, which is picking a piece of the zone uh, to look for consistently, and he's really worked on his, his play discipline as well. And I think he's a really interesting piece in terms of I think he's the backup of the future. He's you know very good behind the plate, very polished, uh, good receiver, good game caller works incredibly hard. And so as a guy who can offer you a little more power than a guy like Roberto Perez could in that backup role, who also has some really good receiving skills, I think Haas is really interesting in a long-term role because I think Mejia is somebody that we talk about as someone who may not be able to play 120 games a year behind the plate because he's a little smaller, but you have to have that bat, and the bat plays really well at catcher. One of the positives is I think Eric Haas could pair really well with that because I think he brings you enough offensively, and he's a good defensive catcher, that they would be a really nice pairing with Haas maybe playing 60 games behind the plate and Mejia DHing a little more and catching 100 games.
All right, well, thank you very, very much for joining us. Uh, again, this video segments are something we're trying to do more of, but waiting for next year. Uh, do us a favor, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff that everybody else on YouTube and podcast tells you to do. Uh, really helps us out, really helps you keep up to date with all the great content, all the great me that I know that you need to get. So thank you, for, don't laugh at that. Thank you for joining uh, and we'll see you next time.